Bad Ronald, 1974. Bad Ronald, drama, horror, thriller. Scott Jacoby knocks this one out of the park. The Wilby place is haunted by a ghost who isn't dead. Now, Bad Ronald was a TV movie, and uh, I don't want to nitpick here, but uh, a little bit kind of underwhelming with the uh, the font, right? The credits. Uh, a little lazy. So everybody knows that Ronald Wilby is bad. Sure, he's a pervert, a sexual deviant, uh, murders children, probably a masturbator as well. But I do want to point out a couple things here. Now, I'm not making excuses for Ronald's horrific crimes. Let's just roll the film and you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's Ronald's birthday, 17, 17 candles on the cake. And he's going into his last year of high school. Now, Elaine Wilby, Ronald's mother, she's got some gut pains, but no worries. Ronald knows where the medicine is. Now, the day after Ronald's 17th birthday, will be the 10-year anniversary of his parents getting divorced. And Ronald hasn't seen his father in 10 years. So, no father figure. And Ronald learns, perhaps for the first time, his mother tells him that she had made a deal with Ronald's father that to forego the alimony, but she would have sole custody and he would have zero visitation rights. Now, this is just sick sick and psychotic. Uh, a boy needs his father. Ronald hasn't seen his dad since he was seven. So again, we're getting these, um, they're laying the groundwork here of uh, perhaps the mom is molesting Ronald. Nah, they don't really come out and say this, but I mean, come on. Boy needs his dad. Trust me on this. So Elaine, I'm sorry, is one twisted bitch. Uh, but she thinks Ronald is going to go to university, become a famous doctor, and she's going to, he's going to cure those uh, gut pains or whatever is causing her discomfort. So Ronald opens up his birthday gift and it is a toolbox fully equipped the best that money can buy. But Ronald is living large and he's got one more gift from Ma. So maybe she's not so bad after all. And it is a set of markers. And uh, Ronald quips, now I can illustrate my story. Lane is a little bit skeptical, you know, don't get too carried away with those fantasy tales. But Ronald, for the first time, shows a bit of the psychosis running through this teenager's brain when he tells his mother, oh, this is real. This place he's drawing his, uh, his story, it's real. So again, we're seeing this kind of, you know, these, these are kind of the early signs of, uh, you know, antisocial, doesn't really quite have a grip on, re on reality. And we're gonna see an example of this in the next scene. Now, Ronald, you know, he's dressing up, he's looking pretty good, looking pretty sharp, but I don't think he quite understands, you know, again, he seems to lack this kind of grasping of reality. Uh, yeah, you could slap on the cologne and, you know, uh, you know, put on some cool, cool clothes, right? But I really don't advise this idea. He tells his mom he's going to ask Lori Matthews out on a date. And I'm sorry, if this woman is not giving you kind of the look giving you the vibes just to go in there and, you know, ask a woman out cold on a date. Oh, I'm sorry. You got to be like, uh, you got to be looking like uh, Paul Newman as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't, I don't recommend this. You know, it's uh it's a, let's just say it's a loser move. It's a loser move. It is, you come across as kind of a freak if you ask me. And I'll, and I'll give Ronald's mother a uh, some props here because she warns him, you know, don't do it. Don't do it, man. You're going to get humiliated. She knows. She knows something. She knows her son is like, you know, twisted freak. So Ronald heads on over to uh, Laurie Matthews place and they're uh, enjoying the pool action. And oh, there's like uh, a guy being a kind of a kind of a comedian here. He's going to big do a big kind of cannonball right where Ronald's walking. I like this guy. He's got some moves. Yeah, take that, you weasel. 
So Ronald says hi to Lori, and uh, basically Lori is just kind of give him a kind of a you know kind of a dirty smirk like, "What are you doing here? What are you doing here, Ronald? Good Lord, don't you get it? Don't you get the social like uh, sexual hierarchy that's going on here?" And so Ronald asks Lori if she wants to go to the the, the movies. Great double feature, and right away she's busy. And uh, ooh, this is the big, the walk of shame. Basically, Ronald getting turned down. Uh, I think he thought if he took off his glasses, he'd look a little sexier, but uh, ooh, no, this is, like I said, the walk of shame. Oh, to be honest, I can feel the pain. I, you know, I've been there. Not very often, that's for sure. Thank goodness. But, uh, ooh, yep. He's just, he got, oh, he got dumped. Dumped good. And there's the gang. There's the gang. They're all just mocking him like, oh, God, who would date you? Oh, Lord, my God, you got to be crazy. Crazy to date this guy. And uh, look at that guy, too, in the pool there. With, he's got the little wave, too. Like, he's got a mustache, and I don't know what's going on there. He's a little bit creepy. So Carol comes uh, comes along riding her banana seat bicycle, and oh, Ronald, again, just a total jackass. Just knocks her over. Again, it was an accident, okay, so uh, whatever. But still, watch where you're going. And uh, so he's on the ground. He's like, oh, but she, and he's just like clobbered Carol there. And Carol's all pissed off, like, oh, what are you doing? And uh, it seems that everybody knows that uh, Ronald has a crush on Lori. And uh, Carol starts mocking him, says like, oh, God, don't you know that Lori only like dates football players? She would never go out with a scumbag like you. Yeah, Carol is, I gotta admit, she's pretty mean, but, you know, I, uh, I enjoy her honesty. You know, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So she calls Ronald a weirdo, and uh, he and she mentions that his mom is weird too. And uh, ooh, Ronald doesn't like this. Like, ooh, his blood's boiling. You gotta remember, he just got dumped. He's crazy about this Lori, but oh, she just dumped his ass, and they all just made fun of him. And oh, he's gotta feel like you know, total shit, total dirt and he just knocks over carol's bike and he's so furious and he says like you apologize you take that shit back and he grabs her by the head and he starts deforming her face and oh the look on ronald oh he is a man possessed he could be possessed at this moment at this very moment possessed by demons i just the terror the terror and he takes that carol and got her grabbed by the head and he throws her and smashes her head against a uh some kind of cinder block there and oh she's dead and suddenly ooh, that uh the demonic possession seems to have escaped ronald and he's he's remorseful oh lord he's about to cry he's like oh my god what if, what have i done you know don't don't just lie there dead and ronald he just doesn't have a clue what to do this undateable child killer is on the loose so he rushes home but it's dark, so what could have taken him so long? So it's late, and Ronald comes home. Mother is worried, sick. What's wrong, Ronald? She can tell. Something very bad. I've done something very bad. So Ronald confesses to his mother that he has killed Carol Matthews. He explains that she said terrible things, and that was, this was an accident. But the moms is horrified when he tells her he found a shovel and he buried the body. She's like, bah, what? Ronald, you, you, you fool, you fool. Ronald considers turning himself in and she says, no, no. She does grab him by the face. He gives him the squishy, the squishy mouth like she's going to kiss him. Uh, so I'm just saying, it's kind of, it's very gently implied. There's a, there could be like a touchy feely thing going on here. But uh, she says, no, we'll hide you. That's what we'll do. And uh, Ronald thinks he's enjoying himself an apple, even though he's just murdered a young girl. But he's enjoying an apple. And uh, he says, well, I could hide in the, sh the shed, you know, maybe the attic. And uh, <laughs> Elaine is just like, Ronald, you're not thinking. And this is where Elaine gets the smart idea. So at least uh, of the two, Elaine has some brains. She figures Ronald can hide in the bathroom. He can stay clean. 
and decent. We'll have to remove the door. She's got extra wallpaper upstairs. We'll have to work through the night. Good thing she bought him that tool kit. So Ronald starts taking the door off the hinges. And the next morning we see it's done and not bad. The kid's got some skills. Jeez, could be a fine carpenter. Forget about this, uh, this doctor career. Forget that. Uh, jeez, if you can do that overnight. Oh my God. Jeez, start your own business. Gee whiz. Like I said, this guy's got some real talent. Real home improvement talent. And uh, he's even jimmied like a little door uh, through the kitchen pantry, the cupboard there. Uh, he can hide. They've got a secret knock. Two for danger. Four for safety. And uh, yeah, even mom is looking going, Jesus, my kid. Good Lord, maybe become an architect or something like that. I don't know about this doctor. Gee whiz. I don't know. Seems like uh, you're wasting your time. And let's remember that uh, Ronald can draw. So, I mean, architecture should be right up his alley. I don't know what this doctor, he just is going to become a doctor so he can cure his mother. That'll be like another 10 years. Oh, oh, come on. Here we got the shot of the bathroom and Ronald sits and kind of just, you know, he's just basking in the glow of his craftsmanship. Bravo, bravo, Ronald. So it doesn't take long for the cops to show up. Two days. They found Carol's body. It was placed in a shallow grave behind the Hastings place. And it looks like Ronald is the main suspect. They've, they've narrowed down the cause of death to like about two hours, 5 p.m. to 7. And uh, Ronald was in the vicinity. So uh, like I said, open and shut case really as far as I think these cops are concerned. But Elaine says uh, Ronald has gone missing. He's told her that he, uh, he's, he's, he's out of there. He's leaving. And he was upset. And so she doesn't know where he is. She doesn't know when he's coming back. And Ronald is in his little hideout there. The lair, as we're, as we're, this is going to be called. And uh, he's just having himself a little chocolate bar. Kind of nibbling at it. Probably thinking about who he's going to kill next. Psychopath. So uh, not bad acting from, uh, from the moms. Uh, and the cops say, hey, do you mind if we uh, look around? And she goes, of course I mind. But she says, but, you know, uh, go ahead. So one heads upstairs and the other kind of snoops around on the main floor. And, ooh, going through Ronald's closet, he finds the jacket with the rip. Ooh, we find out, too, that uh, there might have been a piece of cloth torn on a fence somewhere. That matches. Oh, and there's blood stains. So they grab the, the, the goods, the, uh, the evidence from Ronald's room, and there's actually a note as well that says, Mom, you know, I've done something uh, pretty, pretty bad. Sorry. And that's it. Signed, Ronald. And, and the mom is doing just some terrific acting like, oh, no, he's a, he's a decent boy. She's like being like horrified. But this is kind of weird, too, because, uh, you know, uh, basically we learned that uh, Ronald, it was his idea to, uh, to leave the note and I guess leave the, uh, leave the jacket. I don't know, uh, if this plan is so good, but then, you know, you would think that, uh, in his mind, he's thinking, well, then, you know, then they'll know I I've run away for sure. And Elaine just, just thinks this is brilliant. Oh, we've just totally bamboozled the cops. They don't, they don't understand the criminal minds that they're dealing with. Uh, you know, they're just think they're just like, uh, they're like the puppet masters. So the routine starts, you know, you got Ronald working out and, you know, Elaine is making him breakfast and doing that kind of stuff. He's getting used to life in the lair as they're going to start calling it. And he mentions to uh, his mom, he says, today I draw Princess Vencetta. And I'm just like, oh, no. Oh, no, Ronald. You, uh, you've you been in that, uh, you know, that room maybe a little too long. You got no... Uh, 
no magazines or anything, nothing to look at. I I don't know, but uh, he's starting to get into this this fantasy princess kind of business. Yikes! The the mind you can tell is slowly starting to deteriorate. Now Ronald hears some strange noises, staying in his lair, but it looks like the neighbor, Mrs. Schumacher's poking around. She's always snooping around. Oh, I, I hate that nosy neighbor. Oh, I don't care if you're German like me. Ah, Miss Schumacher, you just, you mind your own business, you old bag. So it looks like we got a treatment here. The history of Atran Atranta, Atranta. Doesn't quite roll off the uh, the tongue there, but it uh, looks like it's quite long, actually. Quite the... Uh, Hmm, quite the effort he put in there. And i got to admit, look at that, um, you know, if you want to call it calligraphy there. Oh my god, nice penmanship. Gee whiz, I'm telling you, this, this Ronald character, forget the, uh, forget the whole doctor business. Good lord, man, get into, you know, you're, in, you're into drawing and stuff like that. I'm saying architecture. Jesus, I don't understand this mom. Jeez, she's so selfish. Just, you know, basically we learned she's got gallbladder problems, but I mean, you know, stop thinking about yourself, you know, push your son in the direction of like architecture. It just seems like a no brainer. The guy's got like natural skills. But unfortunately, you know, this whole idea too of like, you know, skipping town he's gonna have to get a new identity and you know maybe going to school it's maybe like i said i think he's better off starting his own business becoming an independent contractor uh i think you gotta just sort of think about that whole doctor career is like out the window i just like i mean good lord you know look at all these signs here so Ronald is, you know, he's working on his uh, trigonometry and his chemistry and he's spending his uh, his days, I guess, um, and nights uh, doing a lot of drawing. And uh, there he is. He's kind of doing some charcoal drawings, I suppose, you know, kind of action drawings. Not really my style. I think it's a little little sloppy, but I'll give him credit. I'm a bit of a snob. I have I've always had the natural drawing abilities from very, very, very young age. And so here we see uh, Elaine and Ronald basically kind of having dinner together. Ronald's staying in his little uh, his little lair there eating dinner on the floor like a like a savage but remember he is a murderer and uh you know trying to escape justice and this is when we learn elaine has some of the gallbladder issues and uh, she's been tested and she's gonna need a little bit of a little bit of surgery i think dr harris said maybe a little light surgery uh she could be in the hospital for about a week so uh, she's got uh, Ronald a little hot plate there for his lair and, you know, and they're stacking up the groceries just like, you know, okay, you stay in there for a week and you cook your own meals. And this is when Ronald says, mother, I'm afraid. So Ronald is making himself a glass of powdered milk. And I'm sorry, what a savage. I have never, ever had powdered milk in my life. I don't know what kind of low life uh, would drink powdered milk. Now I'm gonna just say that I have had that coffee, coffee mate. Was that powdered whitener or whatever? Co I've I've tried that. Okay, but powdered milk. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. And even Ronald thinks it's disgusting. I mean, what is this Elaine doing to her son? Oh, she's got him jumping through hoops. Oh God, I just I can't even imagine. What kind of sick game she is playing with her son? What is going through her mind? So it looks like Ronald has been busy drawing, and it looks like I guess he's got the prince, maybe this uh, kind of uh, fantasy projection, you know, uh, what he what he desires to be or to be seen as. And I've noticed too on the chest there, it looks like the letter M there. M perhaps for murderer. And there's that princess chick. It looks like he's uh, drawn her face. Eh, it looks okay. But it looks like the uh, the powdered milk is just too heinous. And so Ronald is venturing out of the lair to get some real food. Not that chemical crap his mom told him. Ugh, yikes. Gross. 
So like the savage he is, he crawls through the kitchen to the fridge and he pulls something out and he starts eating it with his hands. But he hears something, he, so he quickly ducks and hides. And again, it is Mrs. Schumacher poking around, sniffing around, snooping around. Oh, what is she like from the Stasi? What is she like, East German? Oh my God, this oh I, nosy neighbor, this woman. Oh, I want to kill this woman. And ooh, hi. Now, East Germany. I'll just take a quick break here. Uh, is fascinating. I heard read uh, a lot about you know well communism. Obviously, you can see how the communist themes have uh, permeated all my artwork. It's uh, I talk about this a lot. But the Stasi in East Germany, apparently one in six citizens was working for the state was ratting out of their neighbors whether they were blackmailed they were on the payroll rat bastards so we got a little uh, michelangelo action going on here and uh a trent a tranta oh he got gotta change that name i'm sorry that thing it just doesn't flow it's actually hard to say so here we meet Aunt Margaret and Mr. Roscoe, who is a real estate agent. And we get the news that Elaine has died. And all that Ronald can do is nibble on his chocolate bar. So the house is going to be sold quick. But at this point, Ronald, I'm just assuming, is feeling bold. He's come out of his lair. He's not crawling on the ground. Not worried, and he's got his little hand drill there, and he's drilling holes. And he's cut a nice actual hole there in the lair to get into the crawl space. Again, I'm telling you, this kid, he's got the home improvement skills. I mean, Jesus, no one recognized this, hey? This guy, it kind of, I don't know, jeez. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of impressed with his little uh, trap door, if you want to call it that. And now he can leave the house if he wants. So he crawls under the house, and he's looking through, I guess, almost that... Uh, not exactly lattice work, but it's got kind of this uh, goose-duck kind of feature. And he sees, oh, Fräulein Schumacher, Vigatus. And she's snooping around, of course. So more holes and more drilling from Ronald. We're starting to now kind of get this, uh, you know, laying the groundwork for the his newest perversion, the voyeurism. And Mr. Mr. Roscoe is back showing off the house, and apparently it's going to go cheap. And Mrs. Wood here, she uh, she's loving the house, uh, but she is curious that there is only one bathroom, but still loves the house. And you can see Ronald is taking advantage of his little peephole, peeping Ronald. And more holes being drilled by Ronald. And then we meet Babs. The whole family has now come to Ronald's house to decide if they're going to buy. And Ronald is enchanted. That's right, Ronald. Check out that jailbait. I can only imagine what Ronald is thinking right now in that twisted, twisted, perverted mind. Rape and murder. What else? What else could it be? So we meet the entire family. Althea, Ellen, and of course, Babs. And now the dad turns out to be Dabney Coleman, Mr. Wood. He will always be Merle Jeter to me, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, but that's okay. So basically Ronald, I think has hit the jackpot here. Ooh, the three daughters, <whistles> but you can tell Ronald is a little bit infatuated with the youngest. Let me uh, say that again, the youngest of the daughters, uh, Babs. And he says to himself, you're as beautiful as a princess. So clearly, Ronald likes them young. And this is, well, it is quite unforgivable. The murder, yeah, maybe it was an accident, even though you grabbed her and threw her head on the cinder block. But, uh, ooh, lusting after the uh, 14 at this point? Ooh, 15 tops. But, uh, ooh, you're, you're getting a little, ooh. Yeah, nah, Ronald, nah, not good. 
And then we meet the comedian again. This is uh, that Dwayne Matthews. Looks like he's going out with Ellen. And so she introduces her to her dad, Mr. Wood. And he's like, hey, how you doing, kid? And boom, like that. In the next scene, he is there eating their food, eating their dinner. But uh, you got to admit, Ronald's got a nice little shot there of... Uh, uh, the family having dinner and and those circles. Uh, I'm starting to enjoy it. It's kind of like a family circus uh, cartoon. So uh, it's a, it's a good look. But then Dwayne virtually destroys the dinner with the conversation of, oh, this used to be Ronald Wilby's home, and he murdered my little sister. And uh, Althea says, oh, Babs was right. This house is evil. Babs was getting the bad vibes when she first walked in. And and the girls were making fun of her. You could tell she was kind of like kind of the odd one out. She was like the runt. So the two older sisters were, you know, beating down on Babs. And uh, so, hey, Babs, maybe she's, she's sensing something. Maybe she can smell Ronald through the walls. Because uh, we see that uh, he's not really keeping clean there. He's looking a little, a little dirty, a little dirty there and uh you know, maybe not the most hygienic but uh babs is babs is maybe sensing his evil maybe his evil the vibrations are going through the walls and babs she knows she can sense it and now we go back to more of ronald's drawings and it looks like this is the evil foe and i think he might even have uh a person in mind who will embody this person who wants to thwart his plans. So basically, you could almost say that deep down, Raul, you know, perhaps, perhaps maybe he's not just a child murderer. Maybe there's more to him. Perhaps he's into this maybe like genociding the entire family. This is the impression I get now that it seems that Dwayne is, is into his crosshairs there. So Ronald is resorting to graffiti on the bathroom walls. Exactly. A lot of mother, mother, mother stuff. A lot of mom stuff. And then we see some backwards lettering. We've got uh, kind of this, um, these kind of uh, uh, mathematical symbols and the E and the N kind of backwards similar. And the backwards could, could represent, you know, kind of this, uh, you know, like a mirror image, kind of a, perhaps a split personality, but most likely this latent homosexuality. Okay, so it looks like the, the family, Woods, are going on a picnic. So this gives Ronald an idea. He needs some real food, not that crap powdered chemical crap his mom was giving him uh, so he basically just leaves goes right out into the kitchen stands like fearless fearless and he's in the kitchen and he's raiding he's grabbing stuff uh drinking milk right out of the glass bottle and you know it's gross and sure i've done this but when you see someone else do it it's different what a pig cue the scary music ronald takes a look out the back kitchen door and there is Mrs. Schumacher. This is just great camera work, so let's just see this. Shocking. Terrifying. So, Ronald, that dirt bag, who knows what's on his mind, but he begins to approach Mrs. Schumacher, and again, it's her own damn fault, you know, the nosy neighbor, but perhaps in her mind, she is seeing a ghost, and oh, she is, like, she is freaking out in her big paisley shirt there, and oh, she takes a tumble down the back stairs and lands on her head, ooh, I dow, ah, I, ooh, probably broke her neck, probably, you know, these frail brittle old ladies and oh there she is passed out and ronald figures oh they're gonna blame this on me but i'm gonna say this is 100 percent ronald's fault so ronald doesn't even bother taking her pulse he kind of calls out her name but no response so he drags her drags her into the crawl space and we don't know what he's doing in there in that crawl space with the body but we do see the shovel so we can we can just assume maybe maybe a quick Cop in a field and bury the body, uh, you know, speculating here. So Babs is hearing things that nobody else is hearing. And Ronald continues his descent into madness.
Ronald is out and about, stretching his legs, checking out the furniture. But you, you guessed it right away. He goes to one of the daughter's rooms. He starts looking through the drawers. He finds a diary, and right away he's just like, "Oh, I gotta check this out." Oh, what a sneaky! But of course, it's locked, and uh, oh, he can't figure it out. I mean, come on, Ronald. What? Now you're a locksmith? Okay, I'll give you the handyman stuff. But oh, and then he hears a noise. Someone's home, so he's gotta get out of there quick. But it looks like uh, Ronald has left some fingerprints or some evidence. He was trying to jimmy the lock, and Ellen suspects. Uh, Babs has tried to read her diary, and Babs is like, Oh, you're always picking on me and blaming me. Now, I just want to say here, I, I like the kind of the duck face going on with Babs. So now I'm starting to see it. Now I'm starting to see uh, Ronald, the appeal. Yeah, okay, she's young, but he, that duck face, I'm sorry. The duck face, I've said this for years and years. This is the greatest thing about the internet. The duck face is the high point of civilization. And I didn't mention there was, uh, again, you know, maybe there's a ghost in the house. That's what Althea says. And, and then there was this issue with the eggs. Uh, there was a half a dozen hard-boiled eggs, and now there's only two. So again, some funny business. Let's just say, Ronald, he's getting sloppy. And I'm just saying the way he's dressed and, you know, you know his bathing habits. But yeah, he's getting a little sloppy. But the, uh, the, the woods, are, they're, they're like always out and about. So uh, they're going to be gone for the weekend. And uh, Babs is uh, playing a little tennis and no one's around. And again, she, uh, she heads upstairs to her room and she is shocked. She is absolutely stunned. There's this big ugly poster on her, on her wall. Some kind of like crummy drawing. And it's Ronald. And she, she shrieks. She's thinking, who's this undateable dude in, in, my, in my room? So right away, Ronald grabs her, uh, grabs her mouth and says, quiet. And he tells her he is Prince Norbert, ruler of Atranta. I finally said it. Come with me, he says. And uh, Babs makes a break for it. And she, she runs. She runs right out of the house. She goes next door to Mrs. Schumacher's place. And the door is open, so she rushes inside. She tries the phone, but it's dead. Uh, Ronald is in hot pursuit, and he has pulled the telephone line. She runs and hides in the basement. Ronald is wise to her hiding spot, and he locks the door behind her. So Ronald quickly heads back to the house, and he removes his crummy drawing. He starts ripping it up from uh, Babs' room, and, he has, and he's just in time to get back into his little lair, his little hiding spot when Ellen and Dwayne show up, looking for Babs. Meanwhile, Babs is uh, locked in the basement, screaming, Let me out! Let me out! Ellen heads upstairs, looking for Babs, and she finds a note. Seems that Ronald has written a stupid note, just like uh, for the police, saying uh, she's run away. Very peculiar. So they call the cops, and then we get the same cop shows up, and he says, like, Ah, it'll be fine, don't worry. And once again, Ronald is getting uh, getting pissed off at this Dwayne. He's like thinking, oh, this guy's ruining all my plans, the evil Duke. And so he grabs the paintbrush and starts painting like, you know, big X's on his face. So, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything, the police. They're thinking, ah, maybe maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. So we're thinking, okay, well, how about we hang out, get some hamburgers. Dwayne's going to watch TV while the, while the chicks go, uh, probably some sports, uh, get some hamburgers. And Dwayne wants his hamburger rare, you know, like some big shot. And I don't know. I mean, I've heard this, like the health risks. I mean, it's ground beef, right? It's not steak. I just, I don't care for this at all. Now, I got to give some props to Ronald here because, you know, like I said, uh, he's been a little bit, you know, uh, like I said, careless, uh, you know, reckless. But so he uh, he realized, okay, Dwayne is all alone. So he comes out there. Then he starts crawling on the ground. He grabs like a candlestick or something from uh, from the display case there, and he wraps it up uh, like in a in a jacket. And then he grabs Dwayne from behind the couch and puts him in a chokehold and starts bashing his brains in. Oh, impressive, impressive from Ronald. But he didn't kill him. He just tied him up and dragged him into his lair. So the sisters have come back from the hamburgers and, and the couch is all like, you know, been turned over and like, oh my God, Dwayne is, 
explain is gone. So they call the cops and he's back again. Same cop and he's just like, okay, well, we'll we'll dust for fingerprints. We're actually going to do do something this time. And uh, and then uh, basically he kind of tells the girls, ah, oh, you just lock the doors and lock the windows and, and you'll be fine. Just don't let anybody in the house. Donald is finally going to make a break for it. He starts packing his luggage and he, and he even grabs that hot plate. He's going to take the hot plate with him. Uh, I don't know, just uh, wasn't thinking there. I mean, I would have ransacked Mrs. Uh, Schumacher's, got the hell out of there, but I guess, you know, he's planning on doing some funny business there with the uh, with the Babs. But uh, Dwayne looks like he's regained consciousness, and uh, he starts making a bunch of noise. And meanwhile, Ellen and Althea are freaking out. I mean, they are shitting their pants. But they got to see uh, what's going on. And uh, so they head downstairs and Althea sees the light uh, coming. And she's like, where's this light shining from? And as she moves closer and closer, it is the, the hole that uh, Ronald had, had drilled earlier. And as she gets closer and closer and it gets more and more scary and intense, she sees the undateable eye looking back at her. And you gotta admit, this kind of looks like, you know, an upside down pyramid. So we got like this weird ass Illuminati stuff going on here. Really weird. For some reason, Ronald just comes crashing through the, the wall. And uh, he, again, he makes a break for it and screams, screams all around. Like I said, Ronald did not uh, really plan this out very well. And, uh, oh, he screams mother as he trips down the stairs and the cops are right there to cuff him and uh and babs seems to have been rescued somehow or maybe she rescued herself and finally the camera as as the family is reunited the uh the sisters we see ronald's picture his somewhat self-portrait maybe his idealized self maybe if ronald hadn't been molested by his mother Maybe if she would have allowed Ronald to see his father once in a while, maybe go to a baseball game or something, uh, he wouldn't have been such a loser with the chicks. But Bad Ronald, a fantastic movie. 6.8 on IMDb. Really, I'm going to give this 10 out of 10 because I'm going to just say this right here. Clocking in at 74 minutes, Bad Ronald is the perfect TV movie. And maybe even the greatest TV movie ever.